Granville? Uh, uh, fetch your clock. The swallows are leaving Granville, and they're leaving it on our window. <laughs> Why me? Did you think I got a natural affinity for this sort of stuff? <laughs> Was it for this I did double entry bookkeeping? <laughs> well, clearly underestimates me qualities of leadership. <laughs> I know that face. <laughs> Nurse Gladys Emanuel. Uh, possibly the finest backside in the north of England. And it all belongs to the state. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, uh, Granville, have you been caught in again? Fat chance. We don't close till nine. Mrs. Scully said it uh, could have been you she saw coming out of there, Margaret. You what? This place on Frith Street. Let me finish. <laughs> go and get them papers in. I told you and told you not to go and see that Ken Russell film. <laughs> You've hardly got your spots cleared up from the last one. <laughs> I'm all right. I hope you're not abusing your health, are you? <laughs> you look to me as if you could do with a good night's sleep. Why, I could, but we always have to get up in the middle of it. Listen, you can't, can't be lying in bed with customers passing the door. Have you no sense of avarice, lad? I'm not a lad anymore. Oh, been through some sort of ceremony, have you? <laughs> Painfully initiated while my back was turned. 24 hours of unflinching agony to prove yourself to the elders of the G -G Grocers Federation. <laughs> hey, do they still practice that terrifying trick with a glassy cherry? <laughs> 25, you know. Oh, that bang we heard was you going through puberty, was it? I thought we had a slate off. <laughs> I thought we had a slate off. I did, really. I could be out in the world developing my full personality. You have got a slate off. <laughs> Look at the world's gone mad out there. You don't want to go out there, lad. Sanity begins at home. Uh, 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 quiet, quiet. <laughs> it's almost time for the news. BBC Radio News at... That's better. <laughs> You've no idea what benefit I derive from that regular daily not listening to the news. <laughs> it's a public duty these days to keep yourself ill-informed, I say. Restores a bit of English sanity to English streets. If we don't sell this soon, we're going to have to empty it. <laughs> <laughs> never, never mind that. Why, why haven't you put the float in the till? Oh, I've put the silver in, but I wish you'd do the note. I don't like that spring clip. I'll give it to you. <laughs> That'll have somebody yet, that. I dread opening that till. I just know one of these days I'm going to find somebody's fingers in there. Mine. <laughs> well, it'll all be yours one day, lad. Yeah, there's more to life than possessions. Oh, been watching BBBBBBC too, have we? <laughs> I told you to leave that channel alone. They don't know any better. They've not had your advantages, have they? What advantages? Oh, that's right. Well, wound me to the quick, won't you? Who, who, who got you out of school as soon as they could, eh? Who's who struggled and, and sacrificed to keep you out of university, eh? And that, <laughs> that's all the gratitude I get. Come on, get your covers. They'll be here in a minute from that first bus. Think on, you. Think on. Some people have to go to university, you know. They, the way their parents are fixed, they, they've no choice, poor devils. Look at that Joan, look at that Joan, look at that... Look at that Joan, Joan, Joan Bakewell. Look at her and all them other fairy lights. <laughs> Whereas if they'd had, had a decent job, started work at 14, they'd be as right as you and me. Hey, up, 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 here they come. 
Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Reg, what was your usual Five party? Usual. For you, so there we are. Back for you. That when you knew you had the yellow barrel for you, wasn't it? That's the idea. And uh, what were you? Oh, yes. Uh, number the seven and an eating press. Thank you. And you were. Uh, 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 I'll come back to you when I get my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> So that's right. And uh, the, every packet feet. contains a government warning, gentlemen. Feet. Feet. I don't know why they buy them. What? And miss an enjoyment uh, give <laughs> That's British grit, that is. That's the British public waving two V-shaped lungs at the experts. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Gramble, uh, fetch your cloth over here. I want to see me face in that knob. An odd little ambition, you might think. Just a shopkeeper's quirk. <laughs> so get cracking till I can see me quirk in it. <laughs> well, talking of shopkeeper's quirk, when you've done that, we'll go over to Nurse Gladys Emanuel and burn, burn, and buff up her brass plate a bit. <laughs> You're wasting your time there. I wouldn't like to bet on it. Then why did she go visiting Wesley Cosgrave? I've seen her car parked outside his place nearly every night. She goes to visit Wesley Cosgrave, as you put it, because the man has what you might term a terminal illness. He's got boils on his ass, 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 all <laughs> which naturally inhibits his organ playing. <laughs> she goes to alleviate his suffering as any state registered Christian would. She has medical relations with him. <laughs> Watch your vocabulary, please. Last thing every night. I am not listening. Stays for ages. I'll kill her. <laughs> I'll, I'll give her every night. Get, get, get buffing. I'm only repeating what's been said. All right, all right, I'm coming. Now, look, I need plenty of hot water, and if you're going to panic, you might as well puddle off home. <laughs> Can you explain why you're spending so much time on, on Wesley Cosgrave's bottom? <laughs> what is this? It's our Arkwright and Nebuk. Oh, 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 oh. oh, not at this hour. Oh, oh. Oh, come to buff up your brass plate. <laughs> and able to gesture. Only to find that you've fallen for a glib line in biblical patter from Wesley Cosgrave. Go home. Leave me alone. You've woken me mother. She'll have acid regurgitation. I want to know if it's true. Of course it's true. She'll be burping all day. One home. You realise that's the first time I've seen him out of uniform. <laughs> I'm entitled to me private line. Nobody's stopping you. Oh, no. We close at nine and the rest of the day is me own. Yeah, I wonder what happened to my watch. Well, it gives me two full hours of daylight every Midsummer's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if it's the daylight you're after, you're still not ready for a private life, are you? Hello. Who's this one for? Number 11. You've got 111 written down here. Oh, heck, have I? I've started uh, stuttering in writing now. <laughs> Listen, when you deliver that, when you deliver that, go careful, for God's sake, will you? I mean, they've waited for, for months and months to get something that they can love and cherish. And now it's arrived at last. I don't want you scratching the bonnet as you go past. <laughs> I don't know why they don't keep it in the garage. Oh, and watch out for her at number 10. She's liable to be her at number 8. They're still swapping. <laughs> Hi-ho. It's a bread man. Oh, none other. The lethal tea cake. Indulging in his ungovernable lust for speed at the expense of my Eccles cakes. <laughs> he breaks like that, all the, all the currents finish up at one end. <laughs> oh, Mr. Arkwright. If I could find me watch, I'd say you was late. Rubbish. I know what you're selling, it's your timekeeping I'm quibbling about. <laughs> oh, fresh. Oh, I never knew a bread man that wasn't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if they make this bread any whiter, I'll have to wear dark glasses. <laughs> that's, how they, that's how they third degree you now, you know. Oh, yes, they lock you in a tiny cell and then they flash a slice of this bread in front of your naked eye 
People like it white. Balls. <laughs> Balls. <laughs> I wish you'd let me finish sometimes. Whitest red in the world. I know. Pity it has to taste like polythene and dip. <laughs> Still, what can you expect with all these monopolies in the flower trade? Just what you get, I suppose. One loaf in 20 different wrappers. Here. Yeah. Keep the crumbs. <laughs> Here, why don't you try me split tins? No, thanks. I'm having enough trouble with me broken biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Now then, you think on. I want some. I want some money from number sixteen. In spite of the fact that she's got an affair, 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 affair. In spite of the fact that she's got an affair, affair, affair. <laughs> affliction. <laughs> it's, it's sordid asking for money. Oh, listen. You may be flesh and blood, but that doesn't give you a license to blaspheme. You know. Don't you ever think about serving the poor? Who do you think comes in the shop? <laughs> I spend my life serving the poor. It's easy. All you have to do is remember never to give them any credit. Here you are, now get off with you. And don't forget to ring your bell when you get to number 75, will you? That carpet fitter's been in there for three weeks. I'd hate you to catch him in the middle of a fitting. <laughs> I didn't think he'd make it. It's time you bought him a van. Uh, never mind that. I'm worried about him. Why? He keeps sneaking off to the bog with the Manchester Guardian. <laughs> it's a stage they go through. Why? When I've, I've struggled to bring him up Orthodox Yorkshire Post. <laughs> There's no place for a formative mind, that. Well, they talk about cannabis as if it were ice cream. The young have this desire to experiment. I know. I'll get him in my shop doorway. <laughs> Hey, what's that perfume you're wearing? Evening in Plaster of Paris, is it? Never you mind. It's your wandering thoughts you should be worrying about, not Granville's. Listen, when are you gonna chuck up this lark and come and look after me, eh? Yours is no profession for handsome lasts. I mean, I fancy the uniform, yes, but it, it's never knowing where your hands have been. <laughs> Keep taking the tablets, Mr. Arkwright. We'll all go away. Listen, marry me, Gladys Emanuel, and I can guarantee you the finest loin bacon. And a, and a and a and a and a and a and a, and a <laughs> full entertainment schedule. <laughs> You're at a funny age. That's all. You'll soon have this bit of trouble with your hormones, and then life will become much more simple. Listen, <clears throat> I've managed to get these two tickets for the Northeastern Mouse Festival, which is being held in my bedroom. If you're interested. <laughs> wow. Two bob. It'll cost you more than that. I'll <laughs> some heavy boots. <laughs> Here, clutch hold of this. I don't want you carried off by the draft under that door. <laughs> I'm all right, is she? That's the idea. Doesn't seem for five minutes since she was your size. Now, I've only got to look round and she got five old levels and thee. Here you are. Now, don't drop that and watch them roads. Cap a big in bottoms. Don't tread on you. <laughs> Nobody liked Wesley Cosgrave, even at school. He had that brand of Christianity that was worse than B.O. <laughs> I wonder what happened to my watch. Well, I haven't had it. Look, we're not discussing your problems. We're talking about my watch. <laughs> Shouldn't leave it lying about. 
shows a deep-seated neurotic anxiety about time passing. Oh, it uh, couldn't just be that me strap broke, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> you don't go great licks on psychology, do you? Well, I don't need it, do I? I'm not a criminal, am I? Bit of umpty, that's what they want. <laughs> that's what he could have done with an old Wesley Cosgrave of a belt round the ear with a Methodist hymn book. Or even a pew or two. <laughs> a small chapel, really. I'm disenchanted with Arnie. You know, he split on me one Sunday school outing at Bridlington for toying with what can only be described as the affections of Mabel Hemsley. <laughs> and only just got started and all. Six months groundwork right up the swanee. <laughs> You know, that girl could get through bars of whole nut chocolate quicker than anything I've ever seen. It was like watching McAlpine start in a motorway. <laughs> you know, ironing is in direct conflict with the mainstream of my personality. And half a fuss about it and all. Cost me a part in the Christmas play, that did. In a word, I hate it. Yes, I was going to be St Paul. Well, they struck me down before I got anywhere near Damascus. <laughs> well, I'd hardly got back from Bridlington. <laughs> all right, all right, we got the message, so you don't like Wesley Cosgrave. I have nothing against him. Anyway, it's not only his boils she's interested in. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> He's got a Veruca. <laughs> I saw the nurse, she told me. What, my Gladys Emanuel? Who else? Did she mention me at all? No, not a word. Is she obsessed with that man? <coughs> all right, I'll go. Just said he got his Veruca. Damn show off. <laughs> Probably got in on HP. Seen a bit of service, hasn't it, eh? Uh, never no more. No, I should think not. Not with your lot. <laughs> well, you do better keeping the bottles than trading the kids in. <laughs> Get away, they're all right. Hey, my last one's going to be clever. He's writing already. He's nearly covered the lavy wall. Yeah. <laughs> I was down there yesterday tea time reading it to his dad. His dad? He never got up specially, did he? <laughs> Oh, it's his pub time. Oh, I thought. Yes. Hey, while I think on, you better give me his cigarettes. He's unbearable without a smoke. Yeah, he's, he's not very fascinating with one, is he? <laughs> you get used to him, you know. Oh, would you give me half a bottle of sherry for our Claudine? Well, that sounds a fair exchange, yes. <laughs> She's very upset. Your young man's just broke it off. <laughs> A tin of cat food. Cat food? I, I, I thought you'd lost your cat. Oh, so did we. But we're in bed all the time with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he likes to put his feet on it. Yeah. Oh, it's been that cold for him up there this week. Well, the council's putting a new window in the bedroom, you see. Oh, I see. But he's still lay there. Did he sticking it out? Oh, yes. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the company. Do you know? I think he misses work sometimes. Sometimes he misses it every ruddy time. <laughs> Oh, come on, he can't be thoughtful. I have seen him with tears in his eyes while I've been lying there in pain. He sobbed, Mr. Arkwright. Well, you wanted him back. <laughs> Never mind, eh? Hey. hey, our Newton will be home soon. Your Newton? Oh, no. They've never given him full remission again, have they? Oh, it's all right. He's going straight this time. Oh, he always does. He's straight for someone's till. <laughs> no, he's been studying. Well, he's met a nicer class of people up there this time. They're learning him a useful trade. He's going into the post office. Oh, probably the night after he comes out, I should think. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't given me any money for those. You are. Good,
Good night, Danny. Thanks. Well, where the hell have you been? Look at the tack. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Listen, if she set off while you were still out, I'd be stuck here, wouldn't I? Well, Wesley Cosgrave would be up there giving her a tune on his Veruca. <laughs> you can't stop her. Well, I can't even try. There's no one here mine in the shop, can I? Well, if I had a van, I could be back much quicker. Mind you, she hasn't moved for an hour, you know. I don't reckon she's going out tonight. No, it's all rubbish. No, if I had a van, I'd, I'd have to call for petrol and things. I mean, I'd, I'd meet people. Yeah, she's in there with her feet up, the fire going, knitting, uh, brushing up her pelvic fractures. <laughs> <laughs> Wesley, you've had it. You know, van drivers have got numerous advantages over people on shop bikes. I mean, as a class, they've got, they've got more panache. I mean, you can't swan up to some bird on a shop bike. <laughs> I'll take her a bottle of milk stout over when we close. I, I mean, have you tried casually dismounting and lighting up your monogrammed cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> You don't smoke. Well, sucking on your monogrammed ice lolly, then. <laughs> Pausing only to adjust the cut of your flaming penny. <laughs> Have you got a frozen zoom? You might well ask some. <laughs> At this rate, I'm never going to find out. <laughs> he wants an ice cream. Come over here, young Keithy. Where's your money? Here you are. Hey, hey up, Granville. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Fetch your cloth over here. Hey, what time is it? About 20 below, I think. <laughs> hey up. Hey up, she's taking something out of her car. You what? I think she must be getting ready to go. <laughs> I think you've had it. She's going up to Wesley's for an evening of boils and Bible bashing. <laughs> Why him? Why not me? She obviously admires his good works. Well, if they gave him a chance, then no better than my works. <laughs> <laughs> How did you do that? Oh, it's, it's nothing really. I was, I was just, just reaching up to get me Bible and the stool slip. <laughs> You'd best come in, then. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> There's more light in there. Oh. I can't take you through to the other room. My mother's watching the telly. Oh, no, the kitchen, kitchen's fine. You, you don't have to make a fuss for me. No, well, just sit down in there. I'll just go and tell my mother who's here. She gets a bit nervous of noise. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mr. Arkwright! <laughs> Oh, <clears throat> you uh, were, were, were you just going out? I mean, I mean, this this can wait till morning, just if it has to. Just one more call, that's all. Oh, <clears throat> urgent, urgent, was it? No more social, really. Social? Oh, I, I didn't think you were supposed to get social with the patients. No, that uh, sounds a bit rammy to me, that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were supposed to be above suspicion, like uh, corset fitters and tattooists. <laughs> <laughs> Sorriest sight, Homo sapiens, male with a spring broke. Let's have it off then. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. The sling, you fool. Oh, I see. Oh, well, less of the sweet talk then. You soft soap everybody like this. Typical oh. men. They all come running for sympathy before efficiency. Oh, oh, <laughs> careful! You'll break it in half. Oh, oh. hey, tell me. What was it like in the Waffen SS? <laughs> My bowels, all right. My bowels? <laughs> Your idea of sweet talk, really. I mean, hey, next time you see him, remember me to Jackie Pallow, won't you? <laughs> I want you to drink this. It's for shock. Well, I've got shock. You will have when you get that down your <laughs> Ha, <laughs> 
Oh! Oh! God, where do you get the recipe for that? The Farmer's Weekly? Oh. I should think that's, that's been handed down from generation to generation, hasn't it? Like typhoid. <laughs> yeah. Does it shift rust? You'll find out what it will shift. <coughs> oh. Look, look. You know very well I, I'd go through fire and water for you, but not in the same glass. <laughs> With it, Justice, you shouldn't come here wasting my time. But have you no compassion for the sick at heart? I mean, do you think of everything in terms of medicine? Could you not just clasp me to your bosom with a motherly gesture? You've got the chest for it. <laughs> Get off home. Now, well, listen, don't go up there tonight. He's no good for you. What are you talking about? Wesley Cosgrave. I know you go up there every night because your car's been seen in his yard. Wesley Cosgrave? Wesley Cosgrave is a very kind man and he does me a good turn. <laughs> Have you no shame at all? <laughs> he lets me park my car there because there is no room at my sister's. Oh! <laughs> oh, I see! <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'll give you part outside where Wesley Cosgraves every night. Well, she is. She's not. She's up at her sister's. Oh, well, you're all right then. I'm not all right. She gave me half a pint of something to drink that was made out of postman's feet. <laughs> Where's she work then? Petrol pumps. Oh, Lord preserve us. A future filled with unlimited free football badges. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on then, go on then, go on, get after her, go on. Go on, fritter away the golden moments of your youth. <laughs> Can I take a couple of chock ices? Certainly. Just put your money in the till. I think because you're middle-aged, you don't know what romance is. It's that magic something that enables you to survive chat like, what are your bowels like? <laughs> She'd be a riot if I took her to the Federation dinner with a vernacular like that. <laughs> She's got a right old grip. With a partner like that beside him, a man would have somebody to unload his delivery wagons for him. <laughs>